Hi, everybody. This is Amy from realenglishconversations.com. We just had a bit of a technical issue this morning. For some reason, I logged into my streaming account and was ready to hit go live and pff, it was gone. So anyway, I've just shared this link with you guys in the old video and I see that a couple of people are here already and I think we'll just be waiting for a few more people to come. Uh, I see Christina, you got the message very quickly. Hi, Silvana, good to see you here today. And I'm just going to continue on with this lesson like normal right now. And if anybody misses the first part, they can just uh, watch the video from the beginning. So as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, my name is Amy from realenglishconversations.com. And today in this video, or this live lesson that we're having, I'm going to be teaching you a bunch of different things about English. Um, the lesson today is gonna to be really cool. We're going to be using an audio clip from one of our conversations. And the most important thing above and beyond anything else is that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use some of the things that you're learning in this conversation lesson. So you're going to be able to use the chat to fill in the exercises and participate with this lesson so that I'm able to help you to understand and to use all of the different things that you're learning from this audio lesson. So how can you participate in this? Well, first of all, everybody who's watching right now is either watching on their, maybe their tablet, their cell phone, or their desktop. And every single one of those devices has a keyboard. I don't want you guys to be share. One of the best things about these live lessons is to say hello, to communicate, to be engaged and to interact with us and most of most important above and beyond anything is to practice using what you learn. And this is actually one of the things that most learners have a problem with. They aren't practicing what they've learned and therefore it's very difficult for them to practice speaking in a conversation because when you just listen to English, you're not really going to be able to transfer those skills to speaking. The best way to improve your speaking is to practice and I consider speaking to be an output activity. That means that you need to take information from inside of you, inside of your head, and you need to produce some English and to try to use it. And that's very different than having things coming into you through reading or listening, for example. So writing is very similar to speaking, except that you have more time to think so this is one benefit of practicing your uh, writing. So I see here we've got a few people that I recognize because they've been here previously to the live lessons. So your first task, the first thing that you need to do, we have 25 people watching right now and I expect no less than 25 comments from you guys saying hello. I want you to type, Hello, tell us where you're from, for example. If you're a member of Real English Conversations, say, hi, Amy, I'm a member. And of course, I'll recognize your name. And uh, if you're not a member or you're here for the first time, let me know that you're here for the first time. And uh, welcome to our live English class. So um, what we're going to be doing today is studying an um, audio clip from our conversation lesson about delivery service. And I chose this clip because I think it's really, really funny. It's the type of situation where um, when Curtis and I used to operate our own delivery company, we had a small business in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. And this delivery company, we delivered everything. It was crazy. But people would call us and ask for something to be delivered. And and we, either Curtis or myself or one of our team members, one of our delivery drivers, would deliver that order. So 
needless to say, I've had a few interesting situations that have happened. And the story we're going to be studying today is one of the funniest ones and one of my favorite ones that um, I like to tell people. So let's just check in here and see who's with us in the chat. Normally, I have my co-pilot, Curtis, handling the chat, but today he's in another lesson, so it's just me here. So bear with me as I talk to you guys, teach you guys, and handle this chat. So we have, um, okay, I'm going to start from the top. So Christina, Silvana, um, a name in Russian, I can't read it because it's not in uh, the Latin characters, so I, I can't read it. But hello, the third person in the chat from Russia. Uh, Refrisa is watching, Ramon, we have Izag, um, Jose, Jose is one of our members. Uh, we've got Hinia, I think it is. David, another member, he's from uh, Canada, Mexican guy living in Canada. I talked to you quickly yesterday. And Silvana, okay, good. Oh, I clicked on one by accident there. Um, we've got Paolo, that sounds like, oh, okay, that's an Italian name. I was going to guess Brazilian, but Italian, okay. And we have uh, another person from, uh, we've got Teresa from Poland, uh, Vladimir. Okay, awesome. Good to see you guys. We've got 34 people here, so I think we're ready to rock. You guys are all coming into the live class. So, okay. Oh, Jack Scott says, um, Hi, how's it going, Amy and everybody? I like ordering pizza, but I'm on a diet. I hear you, Jack. I love everything that's bad for me and my diet, but, you know, we have to be strong sometimes and control ourselves, so <laughs> I hear you. Okay, uh, so just a really quick introduction before we get started. I wanted to show you guys something on the website because um, a lot of you know Real English Conversations because of our podcast lessons. We have audio podcast lessons. We actually have two. We have the Real English Conversations podcast where we have conversations just like the one we're going to study today. And we also have the Phrasal Verb podcast, which uses audio clips from the conversations that we create where we use really cool phrasal verbs because phrasal verbs are part of natural communication. And in those um, podcasts, I explain uh, how it's used in context, give you some examples and an opportunity to practice using that phrasal verb. So we're going to be doing some of those exercises today in this lesson. But first, I wanted to show you a really important part of our website, which I think a lot of people don't realize what we do over at our website and why it's so cool. So uh, let's go over here one second. Oh, wrong button. Here we are. Okay, so <laughs> let me jump over to this window here. Okay, so right here, I just want to show you guys that this is what our member dashboard looks like inside of our courses. And we actually have a ton of content. We have uh, 14 courses set up for you guys to learn. And one of the ones that I really want to pay attention to today is talking about this fluency training videos. And I should really put more attention on this for our members because the tips in this area are literally some of the best tips that I have to help people that I frequently help in private lessons that have the same problems, okay? Let's focus on this right-hand side here. So um, these ones are related to learning mindsets. So my advice on when you should focus on grammar. Here's another one, how to stop feeling overwhelmed. Like for example, when you log into our member area and you're like, whoa, Amy, you have so many lessons. I don't know where to start. Okay, how do you deal with that feeling, especially when you're learning on your own online and your teacher isn't giving you one lesson that you need to do and then the next lesson you when you're learning on your own need to control all of this english that's coming into your life and have a plan this lesson teaches you how to do that um how to know if you've reached fluency um is your goal to sound like a native speaker how to become a independent proactive learner i actually did an entire course on this that's really really good it's about 30 minutes long and it teaches you what you need to do to learn online to be independent and successful anyone that joins as a free member is going to have access to that course um, 
keeping your motivation high, building confidence related to speaking. I know this is a big issue. If you're scared of speaking or you're here today because you want to improve your speaking, send me a message in the chat. So we have uh, speaking advice and strategies. Are you afraid to speak in English? How to start speaking at a low level? Um, use words you know when you speak. This is actually one of the topics I'm going to be teaching you today, how to have a flowing conversation. You know, those awkward moments when you're like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> this lesson is to help you with that flow and to keep the conversation going. But we've got tons here. Translating last, thinking more in English, better pronunciation, tone and rhythm, uh, using writing to speak better. And it goes on and on. These are literally one hour lessons. Most of them, some of them are half hour lessons, but these are all related to speaking fluency and dealing with common problems that most learners have. So let me go back to this other page here and we're gonna get started with the lesson today. Out of any of those issues that I mentioned just now on that chat in that course, do any of you have those problems? Did I list something from there that you have a problem with? Because the advice about how to overcome that is over at our website. So don't forget to head over there and check it out. Okay, let's get going guys. So um, I just have to switch windows here. Let me get my technology organized. Application window. Okay. Um, here it is. Here's our lesson. Okay. And I have to make this a full screen for you guys. And to go to the beginning. So hold on one sec. Here we go. Um, okay. So today we're going to be doing a 60 minute English conversation lesson studying a very funny story called the delivery order, as I mentioned earlier today. And this is going to help you to improve your listening skills, to build common vocabulary and learn how to use it. And most importantly, to sound more natural when you speak because you're using phrases that native speakers use when they speak. And what we're going to do for this first activity is we're going to listen to the story. While you're listening to this, I just want you to pay attention to how much you understand before we review this lesson. This is going to be a three minute audio clip. I really didn't want an audio clip that was so long, but you need to have the context to be able to understand this story. So let's go ahead and, oh geez, sorry guys, I realized I didn't share the audio before doing this, so one second. Let me do this again. Um, I'm a little flustered because I had a technical issue when we started, so bear with me here. Okay, share audio tab. Here we go. Okay. And if you can't hear the audio for any reason, please send me a message immediately in the chat and I'll try to figure out what's going on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start this audio. Let's all listen. I'm going to tell you about this one that is probably one of my favorite stories to tell. Yeah. And uh, okay, so this was one of the last deliveries of the night. We normally deliver it until 11 o'clock, which is the latest hour that you're able to buy alcohol in British Columbia, where we lived in the Canada. Cutoff. Yeah, it was like, well, the store's closed. I guess it was the cutoff time, but it was 11 o'clock. That was the last time of the day that we could deliver alcohol, purchase alcohol, etc. So anyway, I got this call and I think these people, they wanted like a bottle of Bacardi rum and some Coke or something like that, some Coca-Cola. And I had it in my car and I was driving. It was kind of on the outskirts of town in a rural area. And this house had this really long driveway, like maybe, I don't know, 300 meters long or wow. something. So I imagine that the people in the house, they probably saw my headlights coming up the driveway for a really, really long time. And by the time I got up to the house, there were two people coming out and they said, you know, oh, hey, how's it going? Ah, oh, pretty good, thanks. Okay, so uh, let me get your order for you. And I walked around to the back of my car and opened the hatch. I had a hatchback car. So I opened the hatch and I had my delivery uh, debit machine with me and we were doing the transaction. 
And suddenly the two people that I was, I was talking with, uh, they said, Oh no. And I'm like, Oh, what's, what's going on? And I looked up and there was this house, the house had a porch light outside. Uh And all I saw was this silhouette of this guy. And I thought, Oh, okay. But I couldn't see anything because it was dark. The light was behind him. I just saw kind of the shape of a man. Right. (laughs) And then uh, anyway, he walked over to the car and they started laughing and they're like, oh, no, no. What are you doing? Get back in the house. And uh, the guy came around the side of my car. I actually left my driver's side door open. And what he did was he kind of um put his leg up on the inside frame of my door and had his arm resting on the open door okay and this guy was completely naked what <laughs> you saw nudity of course i told you about this remember <laughs> oh yeah yeah that, oh that was like a classic one. Oh yeah so then there's that awkward moment of like oh my god there's a naked guy standing in the door of my car but you know like he had one leg up and like it was a full show <laughs> what'd you do i just laughed i mean obviously that's what he wanted he wanted this reaction of ha, 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 i'm gonna do something funny and you know he was drunk so he thought it was a good idea but i think that's probably my my best delivery story ever okay guys it sounds like the audio is working so i just let it play all the way through so <laughs> This is a really, really interesting story. And one of the reactions I get from a lot of people is, oh my God, Amy, were you scared? Was it dangerous? But no, this was a very harmless situation. And the town where I'm from, people are not really dangerous people, especially living in the rural areas like this. So it was um, just a funny situation. It was something that the guy was doing as a joke. And yes, Silvana, this is true. This is a true story. I saw nudity on a delivery. <laughs> so for those of you that are just tuning in or you missed the backstory of this, uh, Curtis and I used to operate a delivery service in our hometown, Kelowna, British Columbia, for about 10 years and we delivered everything. We delivered um, grocery store items, prescriptions, flower deliveries, food, alcohol, whatever people wanted, they would just call us and we would bring it to their home within about half an hour to 45 minutes usually. So this happened to me, my very last order of the night. It was about 11 o'clock on a weekend. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorite ones to tell. So let's go, (laughs) definitely not a story for your future grandchildren. Oh, People have to be able to handle nudity. (laughs) I think it happens every now and then. (laughs) Okay, so let's go over to our lesson here. I want you guys to write into the chat box. When you listen to that story, how much did you understand? Can you say 50%, 60%, maybe 70%, 100% would be everything? Maybe if you understood every word, but there were a few phrases you didn't really understand. Maybe it's 95%. But I want you to take the time right now to evaluate how much you understood of that audio. Most people usually can understand about uh, maybe 60% if you're intermediate, and if you're advanced, it's probably 90%. But I guarantee you there there really are going to be a lot of things to learn from this lesson. So I'll wait for that to come into the chat. And I have some things right now that are the ones that we're going to talk about and the things that we're going to be practicing. So uh, one of my favorite stories to tell, I've already used this phrase a few times, and uh, we normally delivered until whatever time. So let me show you how we're gonna do these activities today. So I want you to use a sentence here. So my um, 
my, I don't even know what I was thinking with this exercise, but <laughs> I want you to uh, tell me what one of your favorite stories to tell is. This could be like, one of my favorite stories to tell is the time that my cat jumps, uh, jumped into the pool, or when my son said something funny at the store. I don't want you to write the whole, the whole example or the whole story, but if you can leave an example sentence in the chat, just practicing this phrase, one of my favorite stories to tell is da 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 da. Okay. And don't worry about that first blank. That was probably me writing this lesson and thinking about another activity at the time. So I can see here, you guys are giving the feedback about how much you understood. We have 70%, 80%, 90%. Um, Yep, so it looks like we have a lot of people that have intermediate level listening here, and that means you have a lot to learn from these conversation lessons. So um, I'm going to let you guys type in an example about what your favorite uh, story to tell is in the chat box, and I'm gonna move on to the next one. So the next activity here is that we normally delivered until 11 o'clock. And I want you to think right now about your favorite delivery restaurant. What time do you think that they deliver until? And I want you to type that sentence in the chat box. So think about, about your favorite restaurant's name. Maybe you can uh, tell us which restaurant it is or what type of food it is. and when you're able to call and order a delivery for. So these are your two tasks that you need to do. So we're going to use this one here. What is your favorite story to tell? And the second one that you need to do is when your restaurant, your favorite restaurant normally delivers until, okay? And you say, yeah, this here, I'd say 95%. I got lost when you were describing the guy putting his leg up on your open door. And uh, yeah, a lot of people get lost at this part, but don't worry, we're going to go through that section and I can do some live, well, I'm not gonna put my leg up on a door for you guys, but I can explain with my hands what it looked like, you know, my little man here with my hand. <laughs> okay, so, um, Sylvana says, one of my favorite stories to tell is when I went uh, for the first time abroad. Nice, okay. And Refrisa likes to, um, okay, my daughter's favorite story to tell is studying in university. Hey, you're right. You remember what the activity was. So here, my daughter. So my boyfriend's, my mom's, my dad's favorite story to tell. That was the idea I had in mind. Okay, so here we've got another example. So my favorite restaurant is called Tao Tao and it's a Chinese restaurant. And Silvana, you just have to tell us when you think that Tao Tao delivers until. And here, my favorite story to tell happened when I was three and I got lost on a crowded beach and I almost, or I, remember almost all the details exactly. That's a great example of that. So we're waiting to hear a few more examples about when your favorite restaurant delivers until, and we'll come back to that, but we're going to continue on with the next activity to keep everyone going. Okay, oh, this is just a quick uh, reminder about our conversation lesson. So we have uh, 51 topics that are available. You can get the MP3 download or the PDF transcription to really help you dive into the details like we're doing right now. And we also have conversation courses. These are lessons uh, that are based on the audio that we have recorded with some activities and stuff. So it's really, really helpful. Um, you can get the step-by-step -step lessons with quizzes and activities there. And also, if you become a premium member, you're going to get access to our WhatsApp speaking practice group. And you can also get access to exclusive member events like conversation practices that we have. So it's a pretty cool way to learn English online. We've got uh, 14 courses that you can study. And right now we have a 20% off discount. This has been running for a couple of months. It may end soon. So guys, if you've been thinking about it, the stay at home coupon code isn't going to be around forever. 
thankfully, all of us are starting to have some loosened rules and uh, we're considering coming out of our quarantines very soon. So make sure if you've been thinking about joining to come over to our website and get started. Okay, so here we are, the next activity. Okay, so I guess, so this is the part where we're going to be using the cut off time. Okay, and we're also going to be practicing using etc. I'm going to explain what this is because a lot of people don't know this and I get asked very frequently how to use it and what it means. But um, right here, when we look at this sentence, the store is closed. So this means the store is closed at this time. The cutoff time, meaning no, we can't accept any more orders. So for example, for the kitchen, the cutoff time at a restaurant is usually 15 minutes before closing time. That means that the last order that they're going to accept is at, um, for example, here, the cutoff time to be able to purchase alcohol in British Columbia is 11 p.m. So they are not allowed legally to sell you alcohol after 11 o'clock. It's a very, very strict policy and you have to make sure you get to the store before that. So I want you to think about a cutoff time. So some sort of activity that is cut off at whatever time, maybe, like I said, it could be an order that's received at a restaurant. Maybe it's submitting a paper at a university. This is kind of like a deadline, but in this case, it's usually related to placing orders. So you guys can think about that. And I'm going to leave this up on the screen for you to prepare your sentence. Okay. Sylvana said that he doesn't know Tao Tao actually delivers. So, you know, I guess you don't know what time <laughs> they deliver until. Okay, and Nise says that her favorite restaurant delivers until nine. And we've got a seafood lover here. My favorite restaurant, Red Lobster, is, um, okay, in this case here, David, you're gonna, going to say Red Lobster, uh, delivers until 9 p.m. And this is because it happens all the time and it's still happening today. So we can just use the present tense there. Okay, we've got our first example here from Ray Frisa, the cutoff time at, okay, hang on. The cutoff time to fly with a flight is 8 p.m. So we're probably going to add a few more words, but really good example. Like for example, the cutoff time to check in uh, to a flight is, I don't know, one hour before. Okay. So that's a really, really common example there that when you go to, to catch a flight, for example, there's a cutoff time to when you can check in. Okay, let's see another example here. So the cutoff time to enter a bank is 2 p.m. That's right. So maybe they close at 2.30 and they mean like close, close, no more service. But at two o'clock, they close the doors and they don't allow you to come into the bank anymore. Okay. And um, <laughs> my cutoff time to eat is at 5 p.m. because I'm on the 16-8 fasting diet. Okay, so Nisei is having a special eating routine where she is only eating during eight hours of the day. So for 16 hours, she's unable to eat. That's what she means for this example. Um, how's that going, Nisei? I've heard about fasting diets. I haven't tried them, but I think they kind of make sense. Okay, so... Uh, Maribel was having an auto correction issue with her phone, I think, and it was spelling cut with two T's, but she knows that it's only one. Okay, so um, cut off time to sign up um, as a REC member might be very soon. Good example. Okay, so let's move on to the next part that we have to practice. Okay, so we use etc a lot when we're speaking and this is when we have a sequence of things usually two items and then we don't want to keep talking so it might be when i go to the beach i bring my chair an umbrella a towel etc 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because I've given you enough examples of what I'm talking about for you to have an idea of what I'm going to continue saying. So I want you to think of three things that you like to do and put that in a sentence using etc at the end. Okay. And we kind of say this instead of etc when we pronounce uh, this word, we say etc very often, like an X sound, but etc is the, I suppose, correct way of saying it, but etc is very, very common that people will say it that way, just so you guys know. Okay, so let's see here. Just waiting for your guys' examples using etc. Okay, let's see. Come on, guys. Think of three things or two things and put in it, et cetera, at the end, and then we can have some examples. I think this is a pretty easy one, and you probably know how to do it, but you're just typing your answer. So here we are. Okay. I like knitting, cooking, playing bridge, etc. Okay, so you're like a crafty person. This is great. Okay. When I'm at the seaside, I like to walk, to have sunbathes. Uh, this is uh, to suntan, you'll say in English. So I like to go for a walk, suntan, and drink a cold beer, etc. Sounds like a good day at the beach. I like hiking, camping, etc. Outdoor enthusiast. And uh, in my free time, instead of on here, so in my free time, I like to read books, listen to music, watch TV, etc. Good job. You guys got it. Okay, let's move on to the next activity. So in this part here of the conversation, I used four different things that I want you guys to practice with me today. So number one is the outskirts of town. Most people don't know what this means. Coming up the driveway. Coming up is a phrasal verb. By the time is related to, um, it's how you explain two things happening at the same time, two actions happening at the same time. And this one here, oh, hey, how's it going? I wanna talk about your responses to this question. So let's get started with this. So I said in the conversation, <clears throat> it was kind of in the outskirts of town. Okay, so this house was located in the outskirts of town in a rural area. So luckily, the context gives us a little bit more information here, and we're able to see that uh, the outskirts of town is usually in a rural area, which is going to be outside of the city. And the outskirts of town are usually like when it can be for a city too. It doesn't have to be a town. We just say this phrase is very common to explain it this way. So let's say that you have a city like Moscow. Okay, this is a city, big city. And uh, in the center, it's very concentrated. You have some apartments and things. But as you get further out of town, there's going to be an outer area where maybe they have normal houses with a yard. Maybe they have some farms or something like that. So this is the outskirts of town. So I want you to practice using outskirts of town by describing to me how long it takes for you to get to the outskirts of town in the area where you live. If you live in a small town, it's probably going to take like two minutes by car. But if you're in a big city, it might take a little bit longer. So let's see how long it takes you guys to get to the outskirts of town and how you're going to use this. My air conditioner is not working very well. <laughs> okay. All right. We've got some more examples of using etc. It looks like you guys did a good job and you understand that. Okay, here we are. Nisei says, uh, to get to the outskirts of Las Vegas, it would take me about 35 minutes of driving. Exactly. And you can also say um, it would take... 35 minutes by car. Okay. 
All right, so we've got 34 people that are watching right now, and we have about 10 or 12 people that are participating right now. So come on, guys, don't be lazy learners. You need to engage, you need to practice. And right now you have a native speaker here that can give you some feedback and correct your sentences. So please send a message, participate in these activities. Give me an example about uh, using the outskirts of town. And if you're watching this session later, there's a comment area right below this video. You can leave your example. And as you can see from every single one of the YouTube videos that we have, I always respond to every single comment that we get that's worth responding to, I should add. Sometimes people say weird things in comments, but if you're saying a genuine comment and trying to use an example, we're absolutely going to reply and give you some feedback. Okay, so uh, Silvana says, I live very close to the outskirts of town. Okay, maybe you live in the outskirts of the city or on the outskirts of the city. Either one is okay. So here, Jose says, I grew up in the outskirts of my hometown. Nice. And my hometown... Um, only okay so my hometown is only one hour from the outskirts for this one here i am not sure if your hometown is like if this is the city maybe your hometown is here or maybe the outskirts of the city are here and then one hour further is your hometown but um yeah, if your hometown is one hour past the outskirts of the main city, then that example makes sense. Okay. To get to my favorite outskirts, I, it would take me about six hours to travel by car. Okay. So here in this case, uh, you use the word outskirts correctly, but the context isn't very common. So when we're talking about the outskirts, it's not usually like a destination to go to, but instead it's more like a description about an area of this city. So the center is going to be the populated area with all of the big tall buildings and the commercial business and that sort of thing. And then as you move out, it's the outskirts of town and it's kind of just a thing that happens. So uh, it's not usually a very remarkable area or something that we talk about in that way, but um, good use of uh, outskirts and practicing. So awesome. You guys have got it. You're definitely using this well. So we have, uh, I live in a small town, so it takes less than 10 minutes by car to get to the outskirts. Exactly. Same for me. When I lived in Kelowna, it was a town of about 200,000 people. And from the center of town, really, it would take you maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get to the outskirts of town and five minutes further and you're in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, it's uh, in the small cities, it doesn't take long. Okay, let's move on. Next example. So I imagined that people, the people in the house they probably saw my headlights coming up the driveway for a really, really long time. So you can imagine here, I'm in my car and this was a really long driveway, almost like a dirt road or something. I think it was a dirt road actually, that when I turned off of the main road where the pavement was, I turned on to the driveway and I started to drive up this road and you guys know what it looks like when you look out the window and it's dark and there's only one car anywhere it's very easy to see that it really it's a vehicle and if it's coming toward your house you're going to know that they're coming with your delivery because you called for an order about 30 minutes ago so as I was coming up the driveway they could see my lights so I want you guys to try to use this coming up example, and you can use it in many different situations. Here I have driveway, stairs, hallway. So imagine that you're in your apartment, for example, and you open the door and you look outside and you can see that the delivery guy is coming up the hallway. Okay, so anybody that's coming toward you in a long place. They can be coming up the road, coming up the sidewalk, coming up the stairs, whatever area they're walking on toward you, you can use coming up. So I want you to try to think of an example of how you would use that. A 
Luciana is asking a question about uh, the outskirts of town being a beach. Mm, I think in this case, we would probably just refer to the beach. We'd say I'm going to the beach. It might be a beach that's on the outskirts of town. So that's sort of the structure that you would use for that one. Okay, and for this one here for David. So last winter we went snowboarding. Uh, we would add here at a ski resort, which is on the outskirts of the city, but good example. Okay, so who do you guys see coming up? Something. Waiting for some examples there. And while we're waiting for the examples, I'm going to get you working on the next activity, which is by the time. This one is a little bit more complicated and difficult to explain, but I'm going to give you some examples. So we have two things that are happening and by the time is kind of like the time limit end. So by the time I got to the house, so we can pretend at this moment in time, I don't know, um, at 11 o'clock or 11.10, that's when I arrived to the house. Okay, so because I was driving up the driveway for a while, maybe three minutes or four minutes, of course, the people had time to come out of the house to greet me when I arrived. Not the naked guy, just the regular people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so in this case, by the time I got to the house, the people had time to come out and meet me. And that's how this phrase is being used. So by the time I finished eating breakfast, da, da, da happened. By the time you finish cleaning your room, this is something you might say to your kid, by the time you finish cleaning your room, we can da, da, da. Okay. So I want you guys to try to use an example using one of these sentences here. So if you picture yourself eating breakfast and when you finished, whatever other activity or action is going to start, okay? That's probably the easiest one to use to practice. Uh, this one's tricky. So I want anybody who's not sure how to use this sentence to type a comment right now or leave a comment below this video to practice using this sentence so that you can learn through the use of examples how it's used correctly. So let's see here. I'm going to go through some of the examples. So um, I saw my son coming up from the hall. Perfect. Uh, you can also say, I saw my son coming up the hall, <clears throat> and that's fine, just like that. I looked out my window and I saw coming up our friends on the driveway. Here, the sentence order needs to change just a little bit is, I saw my friends coming up our driveway. That would be perfect. Okay. By the time I finished working at the office, I'm uh, going to go back to my hometown soon. So what we're going to probably say here, if I understand the idea correctly, is by the time I finish working um, at the office, um, it might be, I'll be ready to leave for like a trip you have, for example, leave to head to my hometown. Okay. Okay. So that's the first example. We're going to learn how to use this correctly through examples, guys. So let's get the examples here. So by the time I watch this live class, my baby plays with her toys. Okay. So in this case, we need to have um, an action that's going to happen. So by the time I finish watching this live class, my baby is going to want me to play with her because your baby is like, what are you doing? Why are you staring at that screen, dad? Let's play, let's play. <laughs> so it'll be like that. By the time this activity finishes, this result will happen, okay? Um, okay, by the end of June, I am 62, almost. <clears throat> 
by the end of June, I'll be 62. And uh, that's perfect. So it's good. Uh, good sample sentence, but we just have to change the verb tense there for it to be correct. So um, by the time I finish eating breakfast, my kids were waking up. Good. That's a perfect example. It sounds like you were telling a story in the past because you said my kids were waking up. But if this happens all the time, you would say by the time I finish eating breakfast, my kids wake up or my kids are usually waking up, for example. And uh, we have Jalil. This is my first class. Hi, Jalil. Welcome. I hope you learn something with us today. OK, let's see if we can get another example here. So Christina says, by the time we finished loading our car, we'll be able to get this show on the road. Awesome. You were in the class last week, I think, because we taught that expression. Anybody that wants to see any of the past live classes, you can just head to our YouTube channel. Of course, subscribe while you're there. And you can see the playlist that we have with all of our live sessions. OK, let's see here. So by the time I finish watching this lesson, I go have lunch. So I will go have lunch or I'll have lunch would be perfect. OK, it sounds like you guys really have the idea here. Uh, one more from Nise. So by the time I finish eating breakfast, the class is going to end. Yeah, the class will be over is how we'll use this structure. All right, let's move on to the next one. You guys had come up perfect. Any Anyone who has any doubts, just refer to the comments. There are lots and lots of good examples there. Okay. This one here. Hey, how's it going? Okay. I want to know, how do you respond to this question? So if I say to you, hey, how's it going? What do you usually say to that? Okay. I'm going to write that in the chat here. So I want you to reply. How do you reply to how's it going? And I want to hear the different ways that you can respond to this. And you can see my answer in the lesson was pretty good, thanks. OK, so let me get that order for you. So how do you respond usually? OK. And I think, Christina, you wanted to say, I'm good, thanks. There was a typo, but I get the idea. <laughs> OK. And here we've got going good. OK, so we're just going to say this. It's going good. OK, so we just have to add it's in the front there. And this one here. Oh, I'm OK. And you? Nice. That's a very natural reply, especially with the O. Oh. <laughs> That's a very conversational type of response. OK, um, I'm good. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. How are you? OK. And this one here, it's going. This is funny. Uh, <laughs> so Nise lives in the United States, and she probably knows when we use this and why we use this. So <laughs> if you're having a bad day or something is stressful or difficult, and somebody says, oh, hey, how's it going? And you're in a moment where you're thinking, like, not good. <laughs> but you don't want to say that. So you reply with, well, it's going. And that tells people that you're not going through a really good period, but the period will pass and you know that it's going to pass. So that's a really good example there. OK. And um, uh, for this one here, for perfect, if this is in response to how's it going and you say perfect, um, this is something interesting about this reply. So uh, if I ask somebody, how's it going? and I get anything that's outside of a normal range of oh, pretty good, good, I'm fine, thanks, how are you? I'm not really going to ask very much additional information. But if somebody says perfect, I'm like, what's perfect? What's special? Tell me more. So on the opposite side, if you say, eh, things are not very good, again, the native speaker is going to be like, oh, what's happening? Because they take that as a cue that they need to ask for more information. So if you don't want to be asked any other questions about how you're doing, try to keep it in the normal range, and the conversation will just continue as usual. OK, good. 
here's another example. Um, you'll say no complaints instead of no complain, but no complaints so far so good. Uh, so no complaints so far so good. So far so good is usually used when you're having an example where maybe it's early in the day and you haven't had any problems. So your uh, reply will be, oh, how's it going? Oh, so far so good, how about you? And this, this is a really natural conversation as well. Okay, let's carry on to the next part. Okay, this one here suddenly is a really interesting uh, one that I'm gonna talk about today. So this is the situation where um, okay, so I walked around to the back of my car. Okay, so now we're at the back of my car and I opened the hatch, which is that part of the car that's like this. And a hatchback car is a car that's designed like that. So when I opened the hatch, I had my delivery debit machine, which is that portable machine for taking payments. And we were in the process of doing the transaction. So for example, oh, that's uh, $42 or something. And the two people I was talking to in that transaction, they turned and they said, oh no. And I was like, oh, what's going on? Because when someone says, oh no, with concern, I think, oh no, there's something important happening, okay? So this one, the first part is suddenly. And there are three ways that you can use this. Suddenly is the one word version. All of a sudden, I think is the technically correct version. And all of the sudden is another version of saying that. And in my case, in my region where I'm from, we say, all of the sudden. And in other regions, they say all of a sudden. So there isn't really a correct version of this, whatever people are saying around you, you can say, and all three will work. So don't worry about it too much. It's, it's just like the way that they speak in Australia is different than the way we speak in North America. So English is flexible in that way that you'll be understood with either one of these three phrases. So we're gonna practice using this. So I was walking down the street when suddenly, all of a sudden, all of the sudden, whichever one, try to practice using one that you haven't seen before or you're not comfortable with using, okay? And then tell me what happened. So suddenly um, I tripped and fell or suddenly, uh, dog ran out of a house, whatever happened. Some action that happened, I want you to use an example sentence here. Okay. Okay. And just waiting for your examples to come in here. I want to keep this slide up while you guys have time. So you have time to type your example. So I'm just going to wait here. Okay, here's some example or an example. So Maribel says, I was walking down the street when suddenly uh, a mouse, <laughs> moose is a food. So this is funny, but a mouse is like the little creature with a tail. So <laughs> um, I was walking down the street when suddenly a mouse crossed in front of me. So here you'll say, I was walking down the street when suddenly a mouse ran in front of me. Okay, so to run in front of, okay. And we can also say, I was walking down the street when all of a sudden a mouse ran in front of me or all of the sudden or all of, yeah, all of the sudden a mouse ran in front of me. Okay. All of the sudden, uh, 42 bucks. Okay, this is bucks is a slang word for money. Uh, 42 bucks for a drink, what a rocket, or wow, the price has really skyrocketed. Okay, I was walking down the street when all of the sudden a drunk man came up and scared me. Yeah, good example. Normally drunk people on the street acting weird is scary. <laughs> okay, uh, here. All right. I was driving a car on the road when suddenly a motorcycle hit my car from behind. Or you can also say 
uh, motorcycle rear-ended me, and that's how we say it. Uh, that's when someone hits your car from behind. Okay. All right, so we've got a couple of examples here. I'm going to carry on to the next activity. Okay, <clears throat> so when we say, oh, no, okay, this is a reaction. Oh, no, something bad is happening. So type in the chat, what is something bad that could happen that would provoke this reaction? So if whatever activity happened, it would make you say, oh, no. You don't have to really practice saying, oh, no, but I want to hear about the phrases that would make you say that, okay? Be creative. Try to be funny. It's okay. We got to have fun while we're learning English. That's really, really important. Okay. Okay, here we are from Sylvana. I was walking down the street when all of a sudden a policeman appeared and asked me what I was doing. Uh, at that time out of my home. Sounds like a quarantine situation. Good example, excellent. Okay, so I was walking down the street when suddenly a pretty girl looked at me. Pretty good. So <laughs> you'll say, I was walking down the street when suddenly a pretty girl looked at me and that was pretty good, for example. Okay, I was making my breakfast when suddenly my cell phone rang. Exactly, so all of all of a sudden, my cell phone rang. All of a sudden, my cell phone rang. Same thing. Okay, good. So uh, now, this is what would make Christina say, oh, no. Oh, no, Santa doesn't really exist. Exactly. This is devastating for children. <laughs> Usually, they find out from other children, luckily. So that's good. Okay injecting bleach into our body into our body oh no yeah good example okay so i'm sure we'll have some funny examples that come in okay so yeah i had other activities but it's okay let's move on here so um so in this moment this is the part where the guy is coming to my car so let me explain with my hands what's happening here so i looked up and that was from the phrasal verb lesson that we had a few weeks ago, we taught this. So I looked up and uh, this house had a porch light outside. So this just means a light that was outside. And all I saw was the silhouette of the guy. So you can imagine that if there's a light behind this guy, I can't see anything. I can only see the shape of his body, okay? And, um, yeah, I kind of saw the shape of a man, right? And then he walked over to the car. So walk over means that you're usually walking across an area. So he walked over to the car and the people I was with, they started laughing and they said, oh no, what are you doing? Get back in the house, okay? So here are our activities we're going to do. So he walked over to the car and they started laughing is the example. And I want you to say somebody walked over to something. Really simple example. So who walked over to something? Type your answer in the chat or in the comment area below the video. We have more oh no examples. So, oh no, you failed the exam, okay? Oh no, Christina says Santa doesn't really exist. Is it true? Double oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh no, the coronavirus already infected 2,000 people in Indonesia. Okay. Okay, when I failed my driving test, I was very disappointed and said, oh no. Exactly. So they say, sorry, you failed. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> And you might start crying a little bit. Okay. So we've got the next example here from Silvana. Carlos walked over to the path. Perfect. Good example. My husband walked over to the store. He walked over uh, to the door and knocked. Perfect. Okay, guys, you got that one. That's an easy one. When would you say this to someone? Now we need to talk about when you would say this 
get back in the house, okay? So who is trying to come out of the house and why is it important for you to tell them to get back in the house? Go back inside, get back in the house, okay? I want you guys to type an example using this as well. So the policeman walked around over to my car. So we'll probably say the policeman walked around to my car or the policeman walked over to my car. But we don't have to worry about around. Okay. They walked over to my house. Mm -hmm. That's like your friends live here and they walked and they came to your house, which is over here. And we're going to figure out how to use this phrase, get back in the house, get back somewhere, get back over there, <laughs> get back to the office, whatever you need to say to practice this. Okay, so here's a good example. So your son goes out wearing pajamas. He hears you maybe at the front door and he's still wearing his pajamas and you're going to say, get back in the house. <laughs> you're not dressed. <laughs> good example. Okay. So the next one here, the guy came around the side of my car or he came around to the side of my car. Either one is okay here. And the guy came around the side of my car. So I want you to give an example using came around or come around. So who came around to the side of something else? So if you're outside and um, maybe your house is like a house that has a yard around it, you could say this guy came around to the side of my house or he came around to the side of the store. He came around to the side of my desk. I want to hear some examples using this one to come around to the side of something. Okay, so Christina says, I said to my cat, get back inside. I'm not gonna run after you. That sounds like something I say weekly to my cats. Okay, when someone is not respecting the quarantine, get back in the house, exactly. Go back home, stay home. Okay, <laughs> here's a funny one. Okay, I'd say get back in the house when I saw my son without pants on. Exactly, get back in the house. You're half naked, get back in the house. <laughs> okay. Now, so we're waiting for the next set of examples here to somebody came around to the side of something else. So you have to think of an object and somebody. It could be like the cat came around to the side of my chair. So that would be my cat or the cat and the chair's the object. All right, here we go. First example. My driver came around uh, to the side of my car. Um, probably because when you're the driver, you're in the, the car, unless you have someone that drives you around, which is pretty cool. I don't have anyone that drives me around. I have to drive myself. But <laughs> if you're like a um, guy, maybe that's um, uh, in a country where hiring a driver is common. I know in, I, I think, Saudi Arabia, the women used to have to do that because they weren't able to drive. So the driver uh, maybe comes out of the store and he comes around to the side of the car. That would be a good example. Okay, I'm going to wait for those examples to come in and move on to the next one here. This word here is awesome. <clears throat> awkward. Okay, this happened to me this morning, that awkward moment when I logged into my streaming software and I realized, oh my God, my live event is planned for now 
on YouTube and it's published on YouTube, but it's not published on my streaming software that I need to display the lesson. That's that awkward moment where I had to log on to YouTube and say, hey guys, one minute, technical difficulties. So it's an uncomfortable moment that happens, okay? So I want you to give an example of something awkward. It could be like when you're having a conversation and somebody stops speaking, there's an awkward silence. This is like an uncomfortable moment. So what is something that's a little bit uncomfortable that you can give an example, but use this word awkward. We have some more examples coming in for come around. He came around to the side of the lake to find his friend, perfect. Uh, don't go out because you might get infected. So get back in the house. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one here. He took the packet that I gave him and get back in the house. In this case here, we'll say he went back in the house. Usually when we say get back, it's like a command. So that's a good example to point out that difference. Okay. The students came around to the side of the teacher's desk. Okay, we've got our first awkward example here. So Nisei says, when you don't know what to say in a conversation, there's a long, long pause. Awkward. Yeah, very awkward. I agree. Let's hear a few more awkward moments. When the bride said no. I think there was a quite awkward moment. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Do you take this husband <laughs> to be your lawfully wedded wife or uh, husband? And the, the, the bride says, no. Yeah, that would be awkward. Okay. I felt very shy in different situations. I can't remember the most awkward I have. I have had, exactly. Um, yep, we've all felt pretty uncomfortable and awkward. Okay, perfect. So let's move on to the next one here. Funny and my best delivery story ever. So Curtis asked, what did you do? And I explained, well, obviously that's what he wanted. So um, I just reacted with ha 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 and um, he thought, oh, this will be really funny. So he said, ha, 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 I'm going to do something funny. And he was drunk and he thought it was a good idea at the time. And uh, for me, it resulted in being my best delivery story ever. So this here, I want to take a moment to explain the difference between fun and funny, because I think this is probably one of the most common mistakes that I hear, even in advanced speakers. And I think they know the difference, but when they're speaking, it's like they'll say funny when they mean to say fun, and uh, they'll say fun when they mean to say funny. So I want you guys to create a sentence using funny. Remember that funny is the ha, ha, ha. And fun is like, woo, this is cool. <laughs> okay, it's something interesting. So can you create a sentence using funny in the chat? <laughs> okay, we've got Celso says that he is awkward for some things. Or you can say I'm awkward at some things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's funny to have fun. Mm, yes and no. Uh, in this case here, it's funny. Uh, for example, you could say laughing at something is funny and it's good fun, for example, if you want to use both in the same sentence. So Nisei says, uh, do you want to hear something funny? This morning I put my pants on backwards. And you say, I can relate, you know, last week I had this shirt and uh, here in Mexico, we have a lot of handmade products and I had this shirt, which you typically wear over another shirt. Maybe you have like a little tank top or something underneath it, but it had this uh, knitted material and I couldn't tell 
if it was inside or inside out. And when I put it on finally, because I figured out the right way to put this shirt on, I realized that I put it on inside out and backwards. So that's a true story. <laughs> okay, so here. So in this moment, we've got Halil says, ha ha ha, you are looking funny. And if somebody is doing something, you can say, ha ha, that looks funny. So in that case, it's funny. It's something that's provoking the laughter. And I fell in the middle of the street and it was funny. We all laughed. Exactly. So now the next activity we need to do is, um, whoop, one second, sorry, guys. Uh, the next activity here is creating a sentence using fun. So we want to create that contrast in our minds. We need to think about a fun activity is something entertaining, something that we enjoy, and that's different than something that is funny in the way of ha ha ha. Okay, so let's wait for those sentences to come in. We've got another example for awkward. So, mm, you know, when you're dancing with somebody who dances better than you, yeah, that would be a little bit awkward, but thank goodness for the people that know how to dance because they have to teach us non-dancers how to do it. <laughs> okay, here it was very funny because he was angry without a reason or for no reason, exactly. Okay, let's move on here. So um, my best delivery story ever. So I want you to say this was the best whatever you want to say ever. If it's food, for example, you could say, this was the best donut ever. This was the best coffee ever. So whatever the situation is where you really want to say this was the best something ever, I want you guys to create an example using this. I hope you say this was the best lesson ever. You know, hopefully you've learned something with me today. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, uh, Musini says, uh, in my opinion, mocking people is not funny at all. Yeah, especially if they're around. That's important not to do. It's actually very disrespectful um, mocking people. Okay. I like to talk with him because he always says something funny. Okay, we need an example with fun, guys. So what's something you like to do for fun? Okay. And uh, Silvana says, you are the best teacher ever. Thanks, Silvana. Okay, drinking my coffee in the morning is the best moment ever. Exactly, or the best moment of your day, usually. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, our last vacation was the best vacation ever. Who knows when will be the next one? Exactly. That's how I feel about my last vacation too. The best movie I ever watched was, or the best movie I ever watched ever. No, <laughs> I'm adding words. Sorry, let me slow down. The best movie I watched ever was Forrest Gump. Correct. <laughs> okay, your teaching methods are the best ever, by the way. Ah, oh, thanks, Nisei. I'm glad you guys are uh, enjoying these lessons and you're learning a lot. Okay, <clears throat> we've got a question here from, oh, sorry, um, which is correct. He has a funny personality or he has a fun personality. Um, we'd probably say he is a funny person if it's ha ha ha, or he's a fun person. So I think you can say both. Funny personality would be like, he's a funny guy, he's a comedian. And if he has a fun personality, he's someone that's fun to be around. I hope that answers the question. Oh, somebody likes my blue eyes. So you have the best blue eyes ever. Thank you. A lot of people ask if I wear contacts, but I don't. This is my natural eye color. Okay, so when I watch movies with my husband, I get a lot of fun. Here, we're going to say I have a lot of fun instead of get a lot of fun. 
Okay, great. This is awesome. You guys did a great job in this lesson for today. And I know it took us a few minutes to get started. So really, this was a one hour lesson, but we're going over time. And what I want you guys to do now that we've learned some of these phrases, we've practiced using them. And now you guys have an opportunity to see if you have improved your skills, if you understand more when you listen to the audio a second time. So I really want you to pay attention and compare your listening before to your listening after. This is a really, really important part. And it's something that I really emphasize in the methodology that I teach on the website for learning faster, improving your listening skills faster. Stop struggling. You know, if you're listening to sub or you're watching a movie and you're still staring at the subtitles, there is a strategy to stop relying on the subtitles, but it takes more work. You have to listen and dig a little bit deeper into your listening process problems. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> listen to this audio here. And <clears throat> hopefully my voice continues for the rest of the class. But let's listen to this audio. And I want you to pay attention to how much you can understand. I'm going to tell you about this one that is probably one of my favorite stories to tell. Yeah. And uh, okay, so this was one of the last deliveries of the night. We normally deliver it until 11 o'clock, which is the latest hour that you're able to buy alcohol in British Columbia, where we lived in the Canada. Cutoff. Yeah, it was like, well, the store's closed. I guess it was the cutoff time, but it was 11 o'clock. That was the last time of the day that we could deliver alcohol, purchase alcohol, et cetera. So anyway, I got this call and I think these people, they wanted like a bottle of Bacardi rum and some Coke or something like that, some Coca-Cola. And I had it in my car and I was driving. It was kind of on the outskirts of town in a rural area. And this house had this really long driveway, like maybe... I don't know, 300 meters long or wow. something. So I imagine that the people in the house, they probably saw my headlights coming up the driveway for a really, really long time. And by the time I got up to the house, there were two people coming out and they said, you know, oh, hey, how's it going? Ah, oh, pretty good, thanks. Okay, so uh, let me get your order for you. And I walked around to the back of my car and opened the hatch. I had a hatchback car. So I opened the hatch and I had my delivery uh, debit machine with me and we were doing the transaction. And suddenly the two people that I, I was talking with, uh, they said, oh no. And I'm like, oh, what's, what's going on? And I looked up and there was this house, the house had a porch light outside. Uh -huh. And all I saw was this silhouette of this guy. And I thought, oh, okay. But I couldn't see anything because it was dark. The light was behind him. I just saw kind of the shape of a man, right? <laughs> and then uh, anyway, he walked over to the car and they started laughing and they're like, oh, no, no, what are you doing? Get back in the house. And uh, the guy came around the side of my car, I actually left my driver's side door open. And what he did was he kind of um, put his leg up on the inside frame of my door and had his arm resting on the open door. Okay. And this guy was completely naked. What? <laughs> You saw nudity? Of course. I told you about this, remember? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, oh, that was like a classic one. Oh, uh, yeah. So then there's that awkward moment of like, oh, my God, there's a naked guy standing in the door of my car. But, you know, like he had one leg up and like it was a full show. What did you do? I just laughed. I mean, obviously, that's what he wanted. He wanted this reaction of, ha, 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 I'm going to do something funny and, you know, he was drunk so he thought it was a good idea but i think that's probably my my best delivery story ever okay guys so i want to hear now 
how much did you understand this time? Maybe you can share your listening before what the result was to how much you understand now. I want to see how much improvement you guys have had. And I also am going to answer a few questions from you guys if you have anything related to learning English that you want to know an answer to. Just um, ask a question in the chat here. So. I'm going to wait for your answers about your results. And meanwhile, we're going to talk to Nisse here. So I'm still having trouble with words I know, but I don't use. I guess it takes time and practice. Yeah, you're right, Nisse. And actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to share the um, answer that I gave. Nisse is a member of our website, and she asked about this. She liked the idea about um, learning to use the words that we're learning. So we learn it, and then we're not sure how to use it. And really, this is something that takes practice. So something that I do with my students in a lesson, actually, I'll send them some audio and ask them to study it just more for the context than anything else. And then after we go through and we create a, a different story using those words, this is something that really helps you to identify if you know how to use the word correctly or not and makes you think about the appropriate situation to use it in. So that's what I recommended uh, to maybe do an activity to activate some new words. Okay, so Sylvana, I think I remember you said 90% before, so you understood 100%. Congratulations, and you improved a lot. Christina also had 100%. Refrisa, 100%. Okay, we didn't have any 100% before, so look at this. We've got a lot of people that are now able to understand 100% of a fairly complicated situation. And um, Nisei, something I forgot to mention <clears throat> with the, I said I would teach you the area with the guy coming around and putting his leg on the door. So what had happened was that the guy, you know when you have the car and the doors open like this? So the guy, he, my door was open and he came around and he was inside the area where the driver usually would open the door and go inside to sit in the seat. But he was standing there and he had his body in that area and he had his arm up on the door like this and his other arm like this. And he had his leg, if this is the ground and this was the edge of the, the car, his one leg was here and his other leg was like this. So you can imagine this guy like this, totally naked. That was the situation that I was describing in the audio. So, okay, let's see here. Okay, <clears throat> does anybody have any questions about anything related to English? This is um, the moment you can ask me anything, but it's okay, I'm gonna talk about something because I had something in mind here. So, um, you know, as I mentioned before that one of the most important things about studying and improving your skills. And this is something that I really feel that I've become an expert in helping people to identify what their barriers are and different activities they, that they can do to understand different things. So in this lesson, I just want to show you why I did this activity and how this sort of strategy is something that's really helpful. So number one, I wanted you to listen to the audio before without reading the text. And this is to evaluate and recognize where you're starting from. Once you understand your listening level and you realize that there's always room for improvement, you might not have to do this step. It depends on what your priorities are. But the next step is to really analyze some text and understand everything about it. For the people that just look for brand new words that they don't know, this isn't really a necessary strategy. Um, I really prefer you to pay attention to things that maybe you know, but you realize that you don't use in your own speaking. That's something that is an inactive piece of vocabulary, and you need to practice that a little bit to make it active. And uh, a lot of people, they love listening to TED Talks, for example, which are speeches, which a person has spent several months preparing. They have really, um, crafted this beautiful speech to deliver their message just perfectly to the people. And the words that they use are often very, very advanced because it's a professional speech and they're delivering that speech to academic people. 
And those words that they're using are not very common. Whereas in our conversation lessons, the conversation you heard today, all of the phrases and words and structures that we used in there are super common and used in everyday communication, which is really what most of you want. You want to be able to communicate with people in everyday life. So if you want to communicate with more fluency, the goal shouldn't be to learn a whole bunch of new vocabulary you're never going to use. Your goal should be focusing on the type of common vocabulary that everyone else uses in day-to-day -day life so that you can communicate your ideas a little bit better. Obviously, if you work in a specific profession, for example, you're going to be able to uh, learn the specific vocabulary related to your job, your company, the terms that you're using in that area. And that's actually not very difficult. It's more like 95% of the English that you need is probably within about two to 3,000 words, I would say. And then the other 5% are for specific situations that are actually relevant to you or random things. Like I can say, for example, when I look around the room here and I need to explain something in Spanish, I can sort of explain it using the words that I already know. But if it's something really, really specific, I'm maybe not going to know that word. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect my ability <clears throat> to communicate with people and explain what I need. So I really think that the focus should be less on fancy advanced vocabulary that you use maybe once every two years and instead focus on vocabulary that you need to be able to communicate your idea in any situation and words that you're using daily, weekly, monthly, for example. So if you find a new word and you think, I don't know when I'm ever going to use that. Don't learn it. Doesn't matter. If you're not going to be able to use it, maybe you can learn it only to recognize it, but it's not something you're going to learn for speaking. So let's see here. Um, yeah. I'm going to just check here. We've got a couple. Okay, the use of by the time is a little confusing for me. Yes, definitely. By the time is a complicated phrase and it's really difficult to explain. We need to do it with a lot of examples. Um, I'm not sure what your native language is, but I use a website called Reverso Context. Um, and this is a website I promote all the time in a lot of my lessons, especially on the website. They have about maybe 10 or 12 of the top languages, but if you type in by the time in English, even if your native language is not available on the other side, this website will show you probably 30 or 40 examples using by the time. And you'll be able to get an idea or a sense of how this phrase works and how you can use it. But don't worry, that's an advanced phrase. And if you don't know how to use it yet, just keep your eyes out, watch for by the time being used and try to see how it's used and when to use it. This is the natural way of learning English is by learning through examples, comparing, trying to understand it. So don't worry if it's not perfectly clear right now. I'm sure in the next month you'll see it several times and you'll probably you'll probably learn it and you'll probably understand it. Okay. Uh, Refresa says, do you have a fit schedule? Um, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Um, if you mean a fixed schedule, this means like, you know, um, every day we have a class at 10 o'clock, for example. And related to these live sessions, until the end of May, I'm going to be doing them weekly. I think in June, I'll maybe do them every couple weeks because they take a lot of preparation, as you guys can imagine. But it, um, uh, yeah, related to a fixed schedule, I mean, for private lessons, one-to-one -one with our students, we have a, a time that we usually work. We are available between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, Curtis is expect, uh, accepting students right now if anyone's looking for a teacher. They can head over to our website as well. And let me look here. I'm just going to look at the other questions. Mm, I've got one in from Celso in Portuguese. I'm not sure what this means. He says, in Portuguese, we say 
da 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 da. I don't know what it is. So um, he must be sharing with someone else that's in the chat that that's what the meaning of by the way is. Okay. Um, here, I believe you will be um, bring some secrets of learning English and I will always watch more video sharing. Well, Pato, thank you for your message here. I definitely share my advice and the things that I've learned about how to learn a language properly or maybe not properly, but how to learn a language faster. Everybody has to find a method that works for them. And I'm sharing you guys, sharing my advice with you guys about how I learned. So, you know, for those of you that don't know, I was a beginner Spanish student for about 14 years before I figured out that the typical system didn't work for me and it doesn't work for most people. So I looked for different ways that I could learn a language. And now I have a bit of a methodology that I recommend to our students that really deal with different areas. So if you're somebody that prefers to learn with listening, the content we have on the website is going to be great for you. If you're someone that prefers to read and listen to the audio after to develop your listening skills, same thing, our content is going to be good for you. If you prefer to speak, practice speaking and figure out words that you don't know while you're practicing speaking, same thing. Our lessons on the website are going to be helpful for you. So we definitely, um, the lessons and methodology that we have on the website is to get you to improve your listening skills, learn the right vocabulary and practice speaking. Not only with the online lessons that we have, but also in the live uh, speaking practice events that we have with our members as well, which have been a lot of fun lately. So, um, Okay, perfect, guys. I think that wraps it up for today. Sorry, I continue to go over with the time. I'm going to try to get better next week. I think I can do it within one hour. But thank you so much for coming, showing up, and participating. And uh, don't forget to come over to our website, realenglishconversations.com. I'd love to have you guys as a member. We have very, very cool community full of awesome learners that um, have been just really supportive to other people. They love to practice and the progress that they're seeing is amazing. Um, oh, Miriam says, thanks. One of our members, see, <laughs> she was in one of the live sessions a couple weeks ago. Hi, Miriam. Okay, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time and take care.